Welcome to another exciting edition of Cambridge Inside Out. My name is Robert Winters. My name is Susanna Sagat, and we are so happy you're here with us today. So, Susanna, you yes, were, <laughs> were, were going to tell us a thing or two about what's happening in the great, bigger, greater world beyond Cambridge. I know. There's big political news today, Robert. Really? I've been spending the entire day teaching multivariable calculus and uh, Gauss's, or better known as the divergence theorem, to MIT students. I have nothing, no knowledge whatsoever of what's been happening outside the Is world. Is that anything like string theory? No, but I do have a student who can tell you everything you wanted to know about that. I already know everything I wanted to know about that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, tell us about what's happening. So, big political news today. Oh, boy, boy, boy. So, I'm I don't so know, if it, you know, we're so caught up in the city council race that yes. we're not really paying attention to other stuff, but there's big stuff happening on the statewide level. Really? Yes. You know, there's a governor's race coming up. Not anytime soon. You're talking about next year. Yeah, 2000. Okay. In September of next year, there will be the primaries for a governor. I hear I have a neighbor on Lee Street who's running for governor. Hold, hold your thought there. Okay. So on the Republican side, yes. who's running? I don't know, but I might guess is Charlie Baker going to jump in? I believe that Charlie Baker is going to jump in. And today, he did the one thing that I thought he wasn't going to do. What's that? He announced a running mate. Before announcing he was running? Well, he must have because <laughs> he, <was> <laughs> he announced a running mate. Mm. So uh, Karen Polito is going to be his running mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she was running for, is it treasurer? Well, Karen Polito was the state rep from Shrewsbury for about 10 years. And then in 2010, she ran, she, uh, ran for treasurer against Steve Grossman. All right. And she got 43% of the vote. She got almost a million votes. Mm-hmm. And Steve Grossman got one million two hundred thousand, so he got fifty-two percent of the vote. So they're going if Steve Grossman happens to win the uh, Democratic primary, they'd be up again for a statewide election. So that's interesting. Now Steve Grossman didn't he used to be with Mass Envelope? I think he owned Mass Envelope. He owned Mass because they had a really good Boston Park League baseball team. Did they? They did. I used to watch. I used to go watch them. Mass Envelope was a really great team. Wow. <laughs> so that's happening on the Republican side. Oh, okay. And on the Democratic side, there are four people that we know of that are running. All right. There's Donald Berwick, who was in the Obama administration. Wasn't he sort of an active character around Cambridge at some point? He was. I thought. I could be wrong. I don't know. And then Treasurer Steve Grossman, he decided he's not running for treasurer again. He's going to run for governor. All right. And Attorney General Martha Coakley. Martha! She decided. Martha, my dear. She's not running for Attorney General again, so no. she's running. And then Juliet Cam. I might be pronouncing that wrong. Who, are, who, who are, is a Cambridge resident. I believe lives on Lee Street, right around the corner from my house. Yeah, so we have someone from Cambridge running for governor. Mm. I think well, that's good. All right. I guess so what's going to happen for all of you very dedicated voters, Democratic voters, so there's all these people running for the Democratic Party for governor. There will be caucuses of neighbors in neighborhood schools usually in February. Usually very early February, right? Well, I think it's going to be the last week of February or the first week of March. All right. So I think it's going to be the middle to the end of February. And in those caucuses, neighbors will elect people, to delegates, to go to the state convention. The state convention this year is in June, June 13th and 14th in Worcester. And so these Delegates, instead of going to the beach, will be going to a big, dark convention stadium. I went, I went to the caucuses once or twice. I, I found it kind of interesting in that these people just sort of come from nowhere who are representing these various sort of big shot candidates who you never saw before. You, but you they have to live in your neighborhood because well, it's no, done no, by no. Ward and Precinct. Well, the, the people who are actually voting in the caucus, yeah, but they're these representatives uh -huh. who sort of come from wherever because the caucuses matter apparently you know in terms oh, of matters a delegates. lot well and they're they're a little if you're running for delegate it's a little scary because you pretty much have to tell the people who are voting there who you're going to be voting for and supporting at the convention right. so you have to come out with who your candidate is right there so that's what the candidates are doing now they're desperately looking around the neighborhoods for people who are willing to admit they're with a candidate at this early stage right. and who are willing to in june go to the convention and vote for them 
And it's important because the convention is important because at this convention, for a candidate to be endorsed by the Democratic Party, they need 50% plus one of the people voting. Wait, 15%? 50, five zero. Oh. So if you don't get 50% plus one, then you're not endorsed. And where the 15% comes in is that if you don't get 15%, you're then gone. you're off the ballot, I see. the September primary ballot. So there's a lot of pressure. So all these candidates, they need to get at least 15% of the uh, delegates to vote for them to be viable. So there's a lot of pressure there. Now, typically, somebody doesn't actually break the 50% at the convention, right? There's usually a primary. There have been people who are endorsed. Well, but I, just because you're endorsed doesn't mean you're going to. Well, I mean, if it's, if it's, a, if it's uh, the governor is running for re-election, he's going to get 50%. It's sort of a pretty much slam dunk there, right? Well, because he he's, pretty he's, much staffs the, he's the man. Yeah. party. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think most, for the most part, candidates are just making sure they get their 15%. Well, if there's only two people running, you're going to want to try to get endorsed and get the 50% <laughs> plus one. But if there's 17 candidates running, you're kind desperate of, for that 15 per, the, What you yeah. want is that 15%. You just, you just want to be on that ballot. You want to be on the ballot because by then, then you move it off of these um, Democratic insiders and you move it to the streets and right. you try to get people to vote. Now, presumably the Republicans are doing much the same thing, probably having a convention in Lowell or Tewksbury oh. or Somerville. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out that for you in the next show. One of the things I did find interesting at the... Uh, the but if there's only one running, we don't really care. Yeah, there's, there's one thing that, you know, the, the Republicans do something that's really kind of simple. The, the um, you know, you either get, you get to be a delegate or you're not, all right? You get some votes, you're in. You're, the Democrats, they have everybody kind of categorized. So, you know, it's like, okay, well, you have, you have to have the male delegates. Oh, or I can run as a female, or a, you know, different sexual orientation, or you yeah. can get minority candidates. It's like proportional get, representation. Yeah. <laughs> Except that somebody tries to get into one, they go, oh, damn, didn't get it. Oh, I'll tell you what, now I'll run as a so-and-so. And they basically run through the categories. You know, a little bit of bean counting is maybe I'm not, I'm not such a big fan of it. You know, it's either you, you, you want to run, just run as a human being. It's, uh, I don't know, it's a simple-minded soul that way, I suppose. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> so is that it for the... the That's it for... A, I thought that was big news for a govern, gubernatorial candidate to announce his running mate this early on. Why do we still call it gubernatorial? It, it's it it's very so hard silly, to pronounce, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, what are you going to say? Governator? Like Gomer and Goober The pie. governator. Yeah. The governator. <laughs> I like that too. That's pretty cool. <laughs> So any other news from your side? That's it. All right. That was pretty exciting. Well, I'll, I'm going to get local again and say that uh, I did drop in yesterday and today at the exciting city council recount that's happening over at Gilmore Street. You know, I haven't been there at all. Tell us about What is it like? It's kind of a little like watching paint dry. No, what's it physically like? What's okay. the, what's, <laughs> tell us everything. The, everything. You open the door. Well, I, I mean, I'm not really the right person to say everything because, uh, honestly, I dropped in for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, a half hour on Monday before heading to work. And then I dropped in today a little bit before heading to work. Actually, I wasn't even there for 10 minutes today. So what they do up front, their, their process, well, first off, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty reasonably good-sized space, uh, you, know, it, you know, like a department store-sized space. But they've got tables for every candidate. There are 25 city council candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, let's see, they have tables on the outside where they have sort of pigeon coops where they drop ballots in or envelopes containing ballots in. Okay. And they've got a row of tables inside that where they have a couple people for every candidate. So there are at least initially 25 candidates. So there's an official staff person who touches the ballots and then observers for every candidate who wants to observe? Yeah, and the thing is, is that just... So all 24 candidates could have an observer? Um, 25 they could, candidates? But, but honestly, there would be no real reason for... But they any, could. They could, absolutely okay. they could. Or I could go, like I did today. I could observe. But the candidates there, are the four candidates who are sort of locked in this virtual tie, um, you know, who are sort of watching to make sure that a uh, vote doesn't slip away or maybe they can pick up another yeah. one. And honestly, there wasn't that much in the way of votes shifting from the original um, electronic count that anybody could discern. Uh, they did, I think Minka came up to me and said, oh yeah, it was over in Ward 2, Precinct, whatever. There was one that was for originally marked. 2-1 always gets in trouble. 
Well, you know, actually, I could tell you some interesting things about 2-1. Well, that was kind of interesting at the uh, uh, overseas absentee ballot. It seemed like yeah, all the weird ballots were in 2-1. We're voting in right. different places. But uh, I think there was, a, there was one vote that flipped here. Maybe I heard there was one that had originally been for David, no, for Tim Toomey that was then for Mark McGovern. You know, but, you know, so a little bit of shifting around here and there perhaps have, could have a trickle-down effect on some of the other candidates. But for the most part, it's the... Mazin, uh, well, Nadine Mazin, Minka Van Busicum, Craig Kelly, Dennis Carlone crowd. And it's not like, I don't and think- did they have people there? They have people there. And uh, <laughs> it's kind of interesting because, you know, people are sort of cordial, but you can definitely get the feeling it's like different camps, different <laughs> philosophies and points of view, you know? Honestly, you know, there's the Carlone people, the <laughs> people. And then there's, you know, Minka's people, a little more, you know, happy daisy kind of folks. <laughs> And um, yeah, but there's a certain intensity that people have, and they they simply cannot generate enough people to have ev all That's the stations. Much. But the, but it, it's actually a little bit doable because I guess in principle they need to have 11 pairs of eyes ideally because the way they do it's actually comparable to the way they used to do the count initially at the Longfellow School, where what they would do is, and I was always confused by this when I first saw it many years ago. They would. There were there were eleven wards in the city. Yeah. Back then, there were five precincts per ward. Yeah. Then it was brought down to four precincts per ward. Now it's three precincts per ward per ward, except for ward three, which has a fourth, um, because of the weirdness of the way the they they did the redistricting, yep. and they split one in half. So um, so what they used to do is they would go through all. 11 precinct, all 11 wards just do precinct once. Then they would move on to precinct I remember twos. that. Yeah. And then, so you'd get kind of a cross section citywide, and then a second coat of paint, third coat of paint. It used to be five coats of paint to get to the whole city back then. Now it's just three. So on Monday, they got through uh, wards one through 11, all the precinct ones. Okay. And they parsed out the ballots according to number one choice. Um, there were some of the smaller precincts were able to finish very quickly, so they moved on to precinct two. Eventually, I think by day's end, they had actually moved into precinct two for all of the wards. Oh, that's fast. Good. But they didn't complete it. By I think they were kind of closing things down by around six o'clock. At least that's the plan. So when I dropped by this morning, they were still all working on the precinct twos, and they were kind of hopeful. They I guess they knew they would get into all the precinct threes uh, today and. You know, with a little luck, I suppose they could have actually finished it. But see, it's right now it's 5.43. Right now, I believe they may still be going on for another 17 minutes. So I don't want to, you know, jump the gun here. But they were hoping to finish all the Precinct 3s, which would then basically complete the number one distribution. Now, I'm a little unsure about exactly at what point they start kind of fighting out about, you know, I think that I, there was already some people arguing um, and then, election commission is adjudicating whether that uh, voter intent was to be this, that, or the other. So there was a little bit of shifting. I remember I heard today a story of uh, somebody from one of the campaigns, I forget, I don't know which, who was objecting because they said, well, that's not a, that ballot's wrong. That should be invalid because it had a, uh, an overvote. So somebody had marked uh, a one for two different candidates. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it had a perfectly unambiguous second choice. Now the rules are, then it goes to that second choice. Right, um, that's always been the rule. So there was people from one of the campaigns saying, Can "But that's not right." Yeah. I don't. And they were trying to argue that that shouldn't be I allowed. I bet they weren't the number two. <laughs> no, they weren't the number two. <laughs> probably that's right. It does make a difference who's ox is gore. But you know, they've been kind of doing it that way since 1941. So I don't think that one person's moral objections is no, going to really know. hold a lot They're of sway new. on that. But there was a little bit of that going on. But somebody also, I think there was a ballot I heard it, it, over like in the number nine choice, there was some overvote. Said, well, that's an invalid ballot. And they go, well, actually, no, because <laughs> you see, the one and the two, it's going to end up with, you know, let's say Mark McGovern, and it's going to stay with Mark McGovern right. because he's, he's going to get elected eventually. And then he's it's not, not going to transfer any right. the ballots that moving. It doesn't matter if people drew cartoons at the end of the ballot, you know. And honestly, maybe they could have. That could have be a more well, interesting election. We are that. not. Promoting that? No, we're not promoting that. I, I, I misspoke. I, 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 I refuse to be quoted <laughs> as saying that. Do not try that at home. Do not do this at home. 
Um, so um, anyways, there was some of that going on. Now, what's going to be... Wait, so is that it now for looking at ballots and trying to figure well, out how you can move them around? No, no, no. So if they... Here's where it gets a little weird. Um, I think that by the end of uh, today or I, maybe they'll have to spill over into Wednesday to complete it, but eventually they'll get all the number one sort of allotted accordingly. And then yep. people will be able to look and they'll say, well, how much has this changed from the original uh, distribution of ballots by number ones? And, you know, and if, for example, you ended up with, let's say, Minka, who which she was off the mark by what, uh, 15 ballots? I think it was 15, or 13, 13, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's, you know, if she magically picked up four or five ballots and uh, Dennis Carlone lost three, then, you know, starting in before That's the transfer operation, already the, na the things would have narrowed. But, you know, based on just looking at the ballot data, which I've done ridiculously often over the last week or so, you can kind of look and see how many ballots are very unlikely to change. Hmm. In other words, if you see in the ballot data a, uh, a ballot record that clearly has a, a number one for such a, such a candidate, a number two, three, four, five, six, right, and then no yeah. more, that's a ballot that's probably was read perfectly. Uh, what I would do is I would I would actually look at ballots that appeared to have missed preferences, because I've always felt that if it appeared to be a missed preference, most more importantly at the number one slot. Then, uh, then that was a ballot where maybe a voter had just circled the one or put a dot in there and it wasn't picked up by the machine. Yeah. But when a human being looked at it, um, it, they would, it would actually uh, see it. But when I actually looked in, through all 17,846 ballots, which I didn't do by shuffling through them, by the way. We have tools for these sorts of things. Um, I went through and I extracted all the ballots that actually appeared to have a for a missed number one preference. And? And out of the 17,846 ballots cast, yes. there were 50 such ballots. Is that a lot or a little? That's actually a pretty small number. And so what that said to me was um, there were the likelihood that, and then I, I looked even more carefully at those 50 ballots and looked to see whether there were, because um, some of them, if it was a ballot that already, let's say, let's say I was from Minka's camp, and, there was already a ballot that already had Minka marked with a number six, and it was a missed number one. Well, that's not a ballot that's, that's going to become ballot. a Minka right. number one. Right. But it might have been a, Mink, uh, a, a number one ballot for one of the other candidates. So what I actually did was, I, I'm actually looking at it right now over there on the screen. Um, I actually just marked them up to sort of say which, uh, which candidates could, be, um, could potentially benefit from such a ballot if, in fact, there really was a number one vote. It's just that it wasn't picked up. And paying honestly, attention to those four. Right? Yeah, just looking at just to those four candidates through where it really matters here. Yeah. And honestly, there was no advantage for any can one candidate. For you those know. 50 votes? Yeah. I mean, if I looked at there and it was like, you know, if, if of those 50, there were 40 potential Minkas, but only right. two potential Nadim. Right, then uh, they're in trouble. Yeah. The, but the thing is, it was pretty uniformly s scattered around. So I don't really think that the mispreferences are going to reveal a whole lot of difference. You know, maybe you know a few ballots here and there. One thing that I did find which was kind of interesting is, and this, so this is, and I'm not saying this to sort of get people worried, but um, <laughs> I did notice that there are other. <laughs> I'm worried. <laughs> let's let's fan the flames here of conspiracy theory. Um, there were of the 50 ballots. They were not uniformly dis the fifty ballots with apparent mispreferences yeah. were not uniformly distributed around the city through all thirty four precincts. They were all ward two precinct one. <laughs> well, no, not all, but actually that was the top one. Where is ward two precinct one? That's down around MIT, I guess, and um, I, I could actually we, I could even show you a map, but um, it, it's down around one of the MIT wards. Let's see if I can find it. All right, you can close Put that on page. My Techie hat. Yeah, you can close that page right in there. If you just scroll up, you'll see it. Scroll, 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 scroll. The scroll doesn't work. Yeah, all right, so you oh. drag it up here. <laughs> We're so high technique. All right, yeah, hold okay. on. Right, yeah, we'll set a seat. We'll, we can throw that on the screen here. So, uh, Ward. Uh, no, that's not working. Oops. All right, you may I have broke to, it. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> such high tech characters. All right, here it all goes. Right, we're going to go. Look at that. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but Ward yeah. 2 Precinct 1 is now, oh, come to think of it, Ward 2 Precinct 1 is not really an MIT precinct. It's that kind of, tra whoa. Oh, my goodness. Quickly. 
Yeah. I did a good job there. Here we go. There we go. That didn't change. Yeah. Much, did if it? you look over there on the eastern part of the city, East? you see there's some light greenish area. Oh, right here, this triangle. It's this triangular region there. So that's kind of shifted around when they did the redistricting. So it actually sort of cuts up through, I guess, where some of the public housing projects are and what have you. All right. What so, we saw in, when they were doing the uh, provisional ballots is that people who were registered here just uh, it wasn't a big deal they had voted in other places right so they went to other voting booths instead of going to the booth here yeah which but it was then their ballot was accepted there was no problem with it it just they had just moved it aside to be counted mm -hmm. later but when you get over that part of town i mean that's where part of, when part of town certainly where minka lives you know not even she lives over here too? i think she's in three three i'm not three, sure three three is right here, here right around there on essex street but the thing is, is she may actually have people who know her and might potentially vote for her who live in that part of town. Hmm. So that's a possibility. All right. Um, so, back? all right, and we're back. Um, but the thing I did find of the 50 ballots that seemed to have missed preferences, there were nine of the 50 yep. were in Ward 2, Precinct 1. Seven of them were in Ward 11, Precinct 1. Which and is... Fresh up, Pond. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I think up around here on Towers area. So another one of the public housing areas. All right, I'll bring them out. Back. And, uh, and there were six of them. Six of them in Ward Ten, Precinct Three. Okay, so eleven one is right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what? what was and then uh, let's see. And then it was ten three, which ten three is a little is right closer here. to Porter Square, I guess. Oh, no. no, you're right. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Pond. Okay. So anyway, the um, okay. Let's go back to me. <laughs> because Back well, to you. Just, well, I like that. Um, so what that says is almost half of the ballots that seem to have first right, missed from those first preferences precincts. were from like just a few mm -hmm. precincts. So that could mean that maybe there was some problem with scanners weren't picking things up as well in certain precincts. So again, I think that the hmm. recount's probably not going to change anything. But That's interesting. you know, at least there's this. Uh, I have a. There's at least a chance that, in fact, uh, you know, there may have been a slightly less sensitivity on certain machines. That's certainly not out of the question. So we'll see. I'll be watching that. I w we'll get to know, at least from the number one preferences, uh, some indication <laughs> of what's up uh, by, I think, tomorrow. At that point... Well, can uh, I ask you something? When they have the ballots and they've s separated them by number ones, right. so, they're at, so they're at 11, board 11, and they have three precincts, and every precinct they figured out who where the number ones are that's right then do they hand count them or do they put them in a machine they're going to hand count them they're eventually but them. they can't do it right away because of a, a little little provision in the state law or at least chapter 54a which governs the plenty elections mm -hmm. uh, and that's that there is a requirement that what it, whatever the uh, current official record is which right now happens to be an electronic count so the the official record um, is basically the ballot data uh, the law requires that in the case of a recount, yep. that they have to make sure that any ballots follow the original course uh, as much as is possible, unless there's an error discovery which might otherwise change things. Um, so what that means then, and this is ridiculous, but this is unfortunately the law, and some laws are ridiculous. Some are. Uh, it means that they really can't start proceeding with the transfers of anything until they match the paper ballots with the electronic records. In, like, so I took my ballot and I put it into the ballot box and then you put your ballot on next. So if they're gonna have it the same way that my ballot will be there under yours? No, 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 that's, it doesn't always work that way. And, and, and in fact, this is a big mechanical box, so when the ballots do go in, They'll be all they together. just get jumbled up okay. and whatever. So there's no real perfect matching whatsoever so between what the are ballot they matching? records. Well, what they do is they actually have to look at the preferences. So if they see it's an, oh, here's a Mazin 1, a Carlone 2, House 3, Minka 4, uh, you know, Kelly this, and David Marr, whatever. And then they'll find a record that corresponds to it, and then they have to match them. So, Who's doing that? Well, huh. Um, Steve O'Hadies, I believe, is, is a, one of the consultants working with the city. I think what the plan was, and I know they did this before, was you actually take the ballot records and you print replica ballots that you then match one to one. It's not as hard as you might think, 
but uh, it takes time though. It right? does take some time, but so you look at all the number ones in a particular precinct, and then and you have to go and look at all the ballots to find one that matches. And you, you, yeah, yeah. No, the, the, you can do it somewhat systematically, but the thing is, you match them up as much as you can. But then they're going to be somewhere you just simply can't find a match because the scanner maybe missed something, or somebody had a little stray mark and whatever. Right. And then they have to adjudicate that. So I don't know, but it seems to me that if they start doing that on Wednesday, that that's got to continue for another couple oh, of days yeah. minimum. But of course, they don't actually have to do match all the ballots because not all ballots are going to transfer and move. So the, trying to make sure that you meet the letter of the law, uh, you can do that without worrying about the matching for a lot of the ballots. Right? So it's only the ones that are kind of likely to move. And about two thirds of all ballots are never going to move. So instead of looking at 17,000, uh, you know, the universe has shrunk down to about a third of that. Yeah. Um, and it will shrink even further as they go. So you can simplify the matching process, but you know, it's just one of those annoyances because of the dependence on ballot order that we have to meet the letter of the law. So that's gonna be a problem and that's gonna take a couple of days. So I figure, okay, if we're into Tuesday now, so they don't even really get to the point of doing any kind of transferring or anything until probably minimum Friday. And, um, you know, it may be longer. I don't really know exactly what efficiencies are going to work for them. So, hmm. but um, how are the candidates doing? Did you see them? Yeah, they were all there. Uh, not all, you know, not continuously, but they tend to be there. By the way, we're down to our last half minute now. Um, and, um, you know, but they're there and, you know, you, you sort of chat up. If some of the other can, uh, the elected councillors are there too. They come, everybody stops in. So it's a bit of a social occasion. You know, so, you know, I was chatting up Tim Toomey and Sam Seidel the other day, yesterday, and that was fun. That's so, nice. anyway, we should scoot. So, uh, until we'll a be few right minutes back. from now, we'll be right back. See ya then. This is Cambridge.